Hey guys, Jason here from Timber Falls, home for CNC creators like you. In today's episode, we're going to learn how to tile or panel in Carveco Maker Plus. The main reason for tiling or paneling is to break down a very large project that may be too large for your machine. Now the way this works is, is it takes a toolpath and it breaks it down into different sections that you can then move on your machine to machine different parts of your model. I'm building this frame for a client and my frame is 50 inches tall. My machine has a 32 by 32 cutting area, so this is going to be taller than I actually could cut in one pass. So that's the reason we're going to need to panel this project. Now to do this, we're going to have to break our 3D model up into sections. And the way that I did that is I have each section separated by a vector. So I have a bottom set, a top section, and then both of these sides on their own. I'm going to start by machining this right hand side column. And first we're going to move it to a place that's going to make it easy to machine. I'm going to use my relief cookie cutter to move this item. Now that I have the part free we're going to take this and move this over to the corner down here now i want this one inch from the bottom so i'm just changing my orientation from the bottom i'm selecting the y position at one inch and that's going to move it down to one inch away from the edge here i also want to do the same thing on the left side and move this to one inch and this is going to give me the clearance in my material to put screws in. Let's actually make that a half an inch. My material is about seven inches wide, so I just wanna make sure that my entire model fits in the material size. And now that I have it where I want it, we're just gonna paste this down. I need a vector to work with, so I'm just gonna steal the vector that I have over here. We're gonna make a copy of it, and I'm gonna move the copy over using my arrow keys and we're going to try to align this real quick with our piece it's okay that i have this overage here i mainly just want to make sure these notches are lining up if i turn this to the side you can see that right here is where that corner dips in so this is the actual spot in the wood that i want to try to make this corner so i'm going to try to align this line if we use our top down view it'll give us our most accurate view so if we come down here this is our line right here so we're we're right on it that's that's right where we want to be that's going to help us align this piece and i just want to make sure these are aligned correctly because when i cut this piece i want it to fit into this little notch now i do expect to have to sand a little bit to get this to fit perfectly but we'll do all that in the finishing okay and now that i have my part over here where i want it we're going to create our tool paths so the first thing i want to do is create my 3d tool path we're going to be using a selected vector and we're going to use the selected vector that i have my finishing bit is going to be the little b by Cadence Manufacturing. Check out the links in the description below for information about those bits. The Jenny bits are pretty awesome. Okay, I'm gonna select the little b, and I'm gonna change the angle since most of this is really tall and long. I want this to be more of a 90 degree. I think if I make it perfectly 90 degree, it will cut this, these long parts, all at one angle and this will make it cut a lot faster. For our roughing tool, we're gonna to be using the Downtown Jenny. The Downtown Jenny is a quarter inch down shear end mill and works great for the 3D roughing. We also are gonna run the 90 degree angle so that it runs long ways, and we're going to profile afterwards. Leaving all of this, we're gonna add ramping moves, and our material is already set up at an inch and a half. And I'm just gonna calculate this tool path, and we have our entire 3D relief calculated. If I simulate this, you can see that we've got our 3D relief cut going to delete that simulation and I also need to make a profile toolpath I'm going to use the same vector I'm going to go outside I'm going to give this a negative 0.06 and I have sharp corners 
We're going to use the downtown Jenny for our profile pass. And I want to add some bridges to this. Now I'm just going to do these manually so that I can put them where I want them. And you just have to have the edit bridges tool open. And you just click wherever you want these. I have them set to a quarter inch by a quarter inch. Just like that. Let's go ahead and calculate that toolpath. And if we simulate all of our toolpaths, we would have our piece cut with bridges. Okay, and now I'm ready to create my paneling or the tiling part of this. We just go to toolpaths, and with our toolpath operations, we're going to go to our paneling toolpath. Now I'm gonna just going to use this 15 inches wide by 25 inches tall because my part was about 50 inches tall. This is going to give us both of them in two panels. We're going to have panel one and panel two. If you zoom out, you can see that these panels are numbered. And you designate them by the size here. We also can tell it that we want it to overcut. This is going to overcut an eighth of an inch past this 25 inches. So our first cut is going to go an eighth of an inch past this this 25 inch panel down here at the bottom this tells us each of our panel sizes and you can see right here that the first panel is 15 and a quarter inch wide and 25 and a quarter inch tall right here where it says at origin display all we're going to change this to display selected and now we can pick our different panels we have panel one and panel two are going to be the two panels that we use. Now, if I have panel one selected and I go back and simulate my toolpaths, you can see that only panel one is being cut here. And this is going to be the first section of our cut. If I select panel two and let's rerun the simulation, you can see that panel two has cut the top part. Now one thing to note, that panel two is going to start at the edge of the material. It is not gonna be offset by the one inch and half inch that our other piece was. So when you align this on the machine, the second panel will start at the material edge. Now I want to save these panel toolpaths using the save panel toolpath. If you save this using the regular toolpath operation, it's not going to save it in panels. You want to save it using the save panel toolpath. I'm going to save my toolpath to separate files and append the data. We're going to call this one frame R for right. And when I press save, we now have our panel toolpaths. And if we go up here, you can see frame R, I've got panel two and panel one. There is a machine relief for the roughing the finishing and the profile pass for panel one and then we have our three tool paths for panel two so out at the machine we're going to cut panel one first then we're going to slide the material down and start panel two and i'll go out to the machine and show you everything on how to line that up okay guys we're out at the shop i have my material mounted here i have it screwed down and what i've done is i've got one piece of wood that's running along the side this is screwed down i used the router bit to make sure this was perfectly straight and level with the machine and then down here at the bottom, I have a piece of tape just marking the bottom edge here. Now I've already zeroed my material on this corner and I did that before it cracked. Even though I pre-drilled these holes, it's still cracked. And I basically have those pre-drilled holes going up the material so that when I slide it down, I can just screw it back down. Now what we're gonna wanna do is measure and mark our panel sizes. So the first thing I want to do is take my tape measure. We're going to measure out to the 25 inches that our panel size is marked to. I've scored my wood at the 25 inch mark and that's going to help determine our panel size. This is the spot when we finish cutting the first panel, we're going to move this line all the way down to right here. So that line is going to align with the end of our panel. And that's how 
how we're going to measure out our two different panels to slide this down. So right at the 25 inch mark. And now we're ready to start cutting this project. And I'm going to get started and we'll get back to you in a bit. Okay guys, we got our first part cut out. And if I come up here, you can see that we've carved about an eighth of an inch past our 25 inch mark. And that's the overage that it carved from the overage setting. Now I've transferred that mark on the top down onto the side as well. And from here you can see that the, the side is scored at that 25 inch mark. And basically all we're going to do is we're going to slide this piece of material down. And making sure that I'm staying parallel with my board, I'm just going to bring this material down. We're just going to line this up so that we're aligned with that piece of tape as best as possible. Now I did this in a flat spot so that if there's a little misalignment, it'll be easy to sand. And generally when you do these type of tilings, you want to set the distance of your different sections so that they end up in places that will be easy to sand. Now I just need to secure this down and I can start cutting. And then we'll finish out the rest of this piece. I'm gonna get this set up and I'll see you back in just a little bit. Guys, I'm back out at the machine and we just finished the top portion uh, matching with the bottom portion. Now, while this did align very well, uh, we had a little error. The second cut is deeper than the first cut and there's a significant drop right here. So my solution to fix this is going to be to push the piece back up and rerun the first part at uh, the change of depth between what's here and what's here. I'm aligned very well on the sides. It was just a depth issue. I think this depth issue actually came from a missed step because everything was zeroed from the top of the material. But we're just a little off there and you can, you can see it pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now is push the frame back up to its original spot and I'm gonna rerun the finish pass. I'm just gonna reset my depth, the difference between where it's at now and the, the offset. And we just got it finished back up after running it again. And this time we're a lot closer. We'll be able to move that out with just a little bit of sanding. But it matched up perfectly. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button, share this video, and if you really want to join the Timber Falls journey, consider becoming a YouTube member. Your support means the world to us, and it keeps the bit spinning. Until next time, let's keep crafting, keep sharing, and let's make bit happen. See you on the next one.